Hi, everyone. My name is Joseph, and welcome to Hashimoto's Awareness, first international conference call meetup. Today, I'd like to introduce Fabienne Hymans from Hashimoto's Awareness. Hi, Fabienne. Hello, everyone. Welcome. And today, uh, we are hosting this meetup with our guest speaker, Shannon Garrett, who will be talking to us uh, about LDN. And uh, Fabienne, will you please introduce Shannon? Yes. So Shannon Garrett is a thyroid and an autoimmune woman's wellness specialist, integrative registered nurse, holistic lifestyle and wellness coach, certified nurse nutritionist, and a detox specialist. She's passionate about guiding and supporting women to discovering optimum well-being through mind, body, spirit, and emotions. She offers a unique program and VIP days specific for autoimmune and thyroid issues, and she works in tandem with healthcare practitioner or wellness team. Owner and founder at Shannon Garrett Wellness Studies Holistic Nutrition at Nutritional Therapy Association. Welcome, Shannon. So nice to have you with us. Sharon, uh, would you like to share how you were diagnosed with Hashimoto and tell us just a little bit about your story? I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's celiac disease and pernicious anemia. So, you know, I had a triple whammy of autoimmune disease. And when I did get my diagnosis, it was such a blessing to know that, you know, that decade of my life was not, you know, I thought I was, you know, crazy for years. I had, you know, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, um, hypertension, you know, high blood pressure. I couldn't take a walk with my husband, a simple walk down the street without just severe pain in my calves that brought me to tears. Because of that type of pain, I was tested for a condition called claudication, which um, basically means you're not getting enough blood flow in your legs when you're walking due to poor blood vessel um, Mm -hmm. function. Those tests were always negative. So my doctors would always say, you know, um, well, it's just a part of aging or this is a part of being a woman or you just need to, you know, eat less and exercise more. And it was just really, really a dark time in my life. I was never um, able to have children, didn't know why, you know, just lots of issues um, that today we know are associated with autoimmune issues, particularly Hashimoto's, but we didn't know it back then. Mm -hmm. So when I did get my diagnosis, it was a blessing, and I was, you know, so happy to know that it it was real. However, that was just the beginning of another very long journey. My doctor, um, who I have now, and he's the one who diagnosed me, is very educated in functional medicine. You know, but I was complex. I had all these issues going on, and um, I approached you know, my my healing journey with nutrition. I immediately eliminated gluten and dairy, which was very difficult for me to eliminate dairy. All of the inflammatory foods I eliminated, like soy, corn, and so forth. And I did see some improvement, but after about a year, I felt like I was sort of back where I was. So I came across this... Um, information on low-dose naltrexone, and I started to research it, and I found some support groups through Facebook, you know, which I I love and still participate when I can. Um, I took this information to my physician, and he was resistant at at first, but he, he clearly saw that, you know, I had the mind of a nurse. And I could present my information in a way that he couldn't say no, so to speak. So we, we, um, he prescribed the low-dose naltrexone. I went on that low-dose naltrexone, and my life has never been the same. It, it, it has changed my life um, significantly in a good way. And as I learned more and more about low-dose naltrexone and began to, to um, communicate with the LDN Research Trust in England on an ongoing basis, 
I knew that I had to become an advocate for it as a nurse. So in addition to what I do, you know, in supporting and guiding and working with women through their Hashimoto's journey, I also advocate for LDN um, by educating physicians and pharmacists about its use in all autoimmune disease, including cancer. Um, as a result of the LDN, I've been in remission for the past three years. Um, the true definition of remission is when, you know, you haven't had antibody activity within five years. Um, but I've, I've been consistent with my labs and in the way that I feel. And um, one of the reasons that I personally enjoy being on it is that I, I know that it can um, eliminate any secondary autoimmune issues. A lot of, um, you know, patients, women not familiar with LDN will have questions and such about, you know, what do they need to do to, to go on LDN, how do they find an LDN doctor and that sort of thing, and um, I, can, I can help, you know, facilitate that process. There is sort of a protocol to follow to get your body in the best shape possible to go on LDN to have, you know, realize the most success with it, um, which can be things such as candida overgrowth. Um, candida is something that will block LDN from working. To back up just a little bit, what LDN actually is, um, it was this, now Trexone has been in generic form for decades, so we're not going to hear the pharmaceutical industry trying to promote its use because since it's been in generic form for so long, they can't make a, they can't get a patent on it. So they don't have any incentive, unfortunately. But the way that it works in the body, it was discovered several, several years ago that it modulates the immune system by shutting off the blocking the opiate receptors on our cells and while we sleep what that does is causes the body to release its own natural opiates which are endorphins um, and that influx of endorphin activity tricks the immune system into healing itself. Is that why we have to take it at night? Shannon? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, we take it at night just before um, sleep, LDN is um, in and out of the body fairly quickly. It has really no side effects. The only side effects associated with it are those first two weeks that you go on it as it's modulating the immune system and your, your body's releasing these endorphins while you sleep. It sort of can disrupt your sleep, but that levels out you know, in about two weeks for most people. Um, the only other side effect is really a pleasant one. Uh, most people sort of enjoy that they have colorful dreams. <laughs> I, <heard. laughs> uh, I still have that today. I'm on what I'm on the maintenance dose now of LDN. Um, in the beginning, especially with Hashimoto's, uh, we have to you know dose it a specific way and titrate up and really monitor you know, symptoms because it can um, really result in an abrupt need to lower your thyroid hormone. So when I'm working with a patient who's just starting out on LDN, and this is where, you know, it really helps to have a good relationship with a physician and a, a coach or a nurse or someone who's working with you on this because I'm trusted by the physicians to, you know, to monitor the, the woman's symptoms clinically or at least teach her how and guide her through the process mm -hmm. because, you know, if a, if a woman begins to have what she perceives as hyper symptoms and calls her doctor and says, oh, no, doctor, um, I'm, I'm starting to have these palpitations and I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like my blood pressure's up or whatever. Well, the first thing they're going to instruct her to do is to stop the low-dose naltrexone, which is the wrong thing to do. You want to um, start to lower your thyroid hormone mm -hmm. because 
the, one of the first signs that LDN is working in Hashimoto's is that you you do experience the hyper symptoms. It's manageable, um, you know, with with good information in your hands on knowing what to do when that happens. What I was mentioning about candida earlier, to get back to that, is that um, because LDN modulates the immune system and candida is a natural part of our immune system, it can sort of bring candida forward. So it is wise to have candida sort of under control if that's possible or at least be able to know how to manage it if it if it becomes a problem because it is the one it is the one factor the main factor that will cause or block LDN from working. Can you say a little bit more about the you said the candida is an autoimmune disorder effect side effect or well mm-hmm. many of us have candida overgrowth because you know in any autoimmune disease it's really not possible that we would have an autoimmune disease if we didn't have leaky gut syndrome. And in leaky gut syndrome, also in issues associated with that where the um, good bacteria versus the bad bacteria are, you know, out of balance, we have more bad bacteria than good, candida is typically always involved. They tend to ride around where they are in any inflammatory issue you know, which which is the underlying root issue in all autoimmune disease. There's that inflammatory process. And uh, candida can be very difficult to get rid of, but it's not impossible, you know, with the commitment. And it's not really that hard to, to um, keep at bay, um, you know, by avoiding sugar and um, antibiotics and such, especially when they're not necessary. Right. Great. Thank you. I've had, I do know of some women who have been able to go completely off their thyroid hormone after having been in remission uh, as a result of LDN for a period of time. I don't think in my case that that will happen because, you know, the destruction that went on for the decade that I wasn't diagnosed correctly, um, I don't think I'll get that back. However, I do take comfort in knowing that you know the destruction is not perpetually in my in my days now. Um, I no longer struggle with the pernicious anemia, and you know years years before I was diagnosed with Hashi's pernicious anemia and celiac, I about a decade before I started getting you know mystery health issues. They didn't necessarily send me to the doctor, but um, one in particular that that sort of did, that was pronounced was um, interstitial cystitis, and uh, that was initially diagnosed as bladder cancer. I never had bladder cancer, and a, a third, um, you know, physician's opinion ruled that out. But I was diagnosed with interstitial cystitis. I go back to that and wanted to touch, to just touch on that for a moment because they know today that interstitial cystitis is associated with autoimmune disease. Researchers aren't sure how it's associated necessarily, but they do know that it is um, in some capacity associated with autoimmune disease. Um, in my practice, as I work with women who have Hashimoto's, my point there is that I do see a lot of interstitial cystitis. And I guess my message would be to women who may have been diagnosed with that to maybe push their doctor on testing them for Hashimoto's because there's, um, there are some groups out there now as well who have found that LDN is also effective in interstitial cystitis as well as autoimmune disease across the board um, and cancer. Yeah, and we don't know a lot about L- LDN yet, isn't it? Like, it's, it's even... Well, there, there is a lot known about it, and there has been research done on it. Penn State has done the bulk of the research. However, in Penn State, because the pharmaceutical companies are not involved, they rely on donations 
Mm -hmm. from people to continue to fund uh, the research. I just mm-hmm. returned from a Mindshare Summit in Palm Springs with some of the, you know, leading, um, you know, thought leaders in functional medicine. And, you know, and it, it's, it was so refreshing because operating and maneuvering in these circles and talking health care, you know, these are people who are very familiar with LDN and, and using it regularly in their practice. You know, even when you look at our database with the LDN Research Trust and the number of physicians in the database who are prescribing it is really quite compelling. Um, physicians answer to their their state's licensing board, um, and depending on what state you're in, your licensing board may frown upon the fact that you prescribe low-dose naltrexone. So some physicians choose to not reveal that they prescribe it publicly, but depending on a case-by-case basis, they may. Um, In addition, I wanted to mention in autoimmune disease, cancer, interstitial cystitis, it's being used quite often in children with autism as well. Wow. And they're seeing great results. It's amazing. It is. And it's really unfortunate the... Because if the pharmaceutical companies were on board and um, it was put out there, I think it would be prescribed a lot more readily mm-hmm. than it is today. Um, but they just have no financial incentive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's compounded. It does have to be compounded by a, we like to use certified compounding pharmacies. Um, Dr. Skip Lenz with Skip Pharmacy in Boca Raton, Florida, is really one of our greatest resource assets when it comes to LDN. Um, he's, he personally is a patient of LDN. He, he, his story is compelling, and uh, he lectures. Um, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and he was here at Vanderbilt a few years ago lecturing about it. Um, but he's a great resource, and his pharmacy is a certified compounder. Um, mm-hmm. But the beauty of it is, even though it's compounded, it's it's generic and it's very inexpensive. Is he, does he have Hashimoto as well? Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, mm-hmm. and there's one other autoimmune disease. He was confined to a wheelchair much of his childhood, um, and... It's really unbelievable that he's he's able to do what he does today. Mm-hmm. But he's living he's been living pain free uh, since yeah. he's been on LDN. Wow, amazing! Mm-hmm. And when I went on LDN, I mean, it it, it um, within nine months, you know, I didn't have those calf pains that I used to have. I was I was a new woman. It was as if you drag, dragged me from a a cave of darkness and into the light. I mean, my my life just completely changed for the better. I had my brain back. I had, you know, no more issues of um, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, none of those things. My weight became um, maintained really effortlessly, if if you can. You know, I mean, that was, that was something that really I appreciated. And speaking to the weight loss piece associated with LDN, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the drug Welbutrin that's no. used for depression. Well, Welbutrin used to typically have a side effect of weight gain with it, as do a lot of um, antidepressant medications. So the researchers behind Welbutrin have started incorporating low-dose now. Trexone into Wellbutrin, which amazes me since the drug companies don't want to promote LDN on its own, but now they're adding it to Wellbutrin to promote it as um, a benefit for weight loss. Oh, wow. Interesting. LDN is not a dangerous drug. It's, you know, now Trexone in its typical 50 milligram dose is still available in that dose, and it's been used for decades. The larger doses of 50 milligram, 50 milligram, um, were used for drug and opiate alcohol addiction. But it was just by a discovery 
of an endocrinologist many years ago who found that when it's used in low doses, and when we say low doses, we mean 0.5 to 4.5. We don't typically go any higher than that. But they found that this miraculous event occurs that um, the immune system can be tricked into healing itself by modulation. As opposed to a steroid that, you know, suppresses the immune system, um, this modulates it. Okay. Well, I think that we can open up for question and answer unless you want to add add anything, Shannon. I do want to, you know, I'm afraid we'll run out and I'll never get this in on the call. (laughs) I do want to say, I do want to say that If anyone is interested in collaborating with others who are either interested in LDN um, or know that they want to pursue it for a family member, a loved one, or friend, to check out the Facebook group called Beating Thyroid Disease with LDN. Um, the founder of that of that group is Deb Anderson Eastman, and she's phenomenal. Claudia Hurst is also in that book, in that group, and she um, she's been with us for years, and is just a fantastic resource and always very helpful. Um, I mean, anytime anyone has a question, she's always there to answer. Also, I have a book out. It's called Hashimoto's Finding Joy in the Journey. It's an ebook. Um, we've we've gone to Amazon. It's in Kindle version now. It's going to paperback, and it'll have a companion book. But due to um, or a companion workbook, but due to Amazon's rules and regulations, I can only offer it for free for the next forty eight hours. So I wanted to give your community a link to go to if they're interested in the book, and they, it's theirs for free. I'd love for them to have it. It's uh, written from the heart, and um, oh it's something God, it's I so hope generous. they would enjoy. Thank you so much on behalf of the community of HA to yeah. offer this. So what yeah. is um, the link, or should I just... Um, Post it tomorrow, or you can. See um, it here. I can give you the link now, and you can maybe perhaps post it as well. It's yeah. sort of long. I um, will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's you can it's see H- it, and then tomorrow I'll, I'll cloud. Yeah. It okay. Anything. Okay. We'll do it that way. It'd probably be easier because then all all your community will have to do is click on it, and mm-hmm. it'll exactly. take them directly to we'll it. Just yes. Post it. Thank you so so much. Yeah. And thank my you pleasure. for being. Thank you for being here with us and share all these amazing news. Well, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure um, to serve. (laughs) For being you and for feeling better and being in remission. And uh, I know what it is. uh, We have a very similar story. I've been undiagnosed for most of my life, actually. Really? Uh Mm Really? So I've I've met those places of uh, hopelessness, you know. Yes. Well, and that's why I wrote the book, because, you know, I took myself back to that place where I was in that hopelessness state when I couldn't get off the sofa. You know, I remember once a week, if I were able to make it to church, everyone would say, well, you don't look like you're sick. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> and I'm sure we, we've all heard we've all heard that. Yes. But what, yes. you know, makeup goes a long way, And but what they didn't realize, Fabienne, is that you know, that may have been the only day of the week I was able to get out of the house, you know, mm-hmm. get off the couch. Yeah. And um, it, it's a very isolating experience. Hashimoto's is one of those, you know, with rheumatoid arthritis, you can see that the person has inflamed joints um, mm-hmm. or some of the other issues. MS, you can see that there's a, a physical disability there. With Hashimoto's, you don't see that in people Um, you may see a weight issue but we our society doesn't associate a weight issue with being you know Mm -hmm. in in an autoimmune state or a chronic state Mm -hmm. Um, so it is very difficult it's very isolating and I'm just so glad that there are resources today to lift us up Mm -hmm. and and help one another 
you know, be mm. guided along the way to healing. Mm, that's one of the mission of HA, to bring uh, clarity and mm-hmm. support and research to the community. So we're going to open up the question and answer. Hi, this is Deb in Los Angeles, and thank you so much for the information, Shannon. Um, I have a couple questions in terms of, did you alter any other aspects of your protocol with regard to diet and so forth once you started the LDN? No, not really. I had already been um, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free. I had already been tested for um, food sensitivities. And I had Mm -hmm. eliminated all of those foods that were, you know, triggering even low-level inflammation in my body. So, really, I had accomplished the most difficult part with my diet, you know, um, way before I went on LDN. So, it it, it really wasn't an issue. Uh, what What I was mostly looking out for when I went on LDN was you know, making sure that I monitored my symptoms. I did a daily blood pressure and heart rate and a basal body temperature, and I Mm -hmm. I kept a journal. I really tried to check in with my body. You know, we all have this wisdom about our own body that we should really um, pay attention to because even with um, hyper-hypo symptoms, sometimes the symptoms are the same. So you can have an elevated heart rate with being hypo. So I really just tuned in with my body and kept a journal on my daily symptoms and how I was feeling and compared those with my objective data, you know, my heart rate, blood pressure, and basal body temperature. And did you reduce your thyroid medicine? Were you taking something like Synthroid or... Um, yeah, I was on Synthroid the last year of the decade that I got it, you know, before I got an official diagnosis of Hashimoto's. Mm-hmm. I saw a world-renowned endocrinologist, allegedly, who had me on Synthroid for mm-hmm. one year, and it did nothing for me at all. It, it really just made my symptoms worse. Um, so I was able to transition to natural desiccated thyroid. Today I'm on um NPT by Acela Pharmaceuticals, which I have found for me to be um, the optimal form. Um, and I, I dose my thyroid hormones sublingually. Right. So, and what does N- NPT stand for? Natural porcine thyroid. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's made by Acela Pharmaceuticals in Alpharetta, Georgia. Uh, it's available through Walgreens, um, most CVS stores. It's not expensive, and it's it's one of my favorites. Um, I had tried Armor. I was one of those people during the 08, 09, you know, time frame when Armor was changing their formula, mm-hmm. and uh, I just didn't respond to it very well. But um, I've had great success with NP thyroid. You're, thank you thank for you the for question. questions. Yeah, hello. Okay. So my name is Christina and I'm calling from New York City, but I'm actually from Germany. And thank you, first of all, for the really interesting talk. I've never heard about LDN before, actually. And so my first, like, a practical question is, um, is LDN, does it have to be prescribed by a doctor or can I buy it just in a drugstore or buy it online or actually also in Europe or in Germany? Um, it does have to be prescribed by your physician. Yes, it is a pharmaceutical, and it has to be compounded by a you know a pharmacy that has those capabilities. Um, there are pharmacies who aren't necessarily certified in their compounding of LDN, but we do recommend only LDN pharmacies. Um, I'm going to give you a link. Um, yes. The low dose now tracks on homepage. Um, the link address for that is lowdosenaltrexone.org. Okay. And okay. you can find, you know, they update that page every day. Um, this is operated by the um, LDN Research Trust, I believe. And um, you can also find a list of certified compounding pharmacies here. Mm-hmm. Okay. On the link. Okay. Yes. Um, I've got another question because you also mentioned the candida overgrowth because yes. recently I was also um, they just were discovering that I don't have that in my body, but my doctors in Germany only gave me kind of homeopathic 
mm-hmm. like uh, liquids, which don't really help, I guess. Uh, what, do you, what do you recommend to get rid of the candida forever? Well, depending to the which, depending to which you know the degree is that of overgrowth mm-hmm. that you have. If it's if it's not significant, I've personally had a lot of success, and so have my patients with um, grape seed extract. Mm-hmm. So it comes in liquid and it comes in tablets. Um, the liquid form sort of kills all the candida from the esophagus up, and the mm-hmm. tablets that you swallow, kill everything, you know, esophagus down, lower GI. If that's not effective for you, you have to, I don't know what your options there for, uh, for example, Nystatin are. Um, Those are antifungals. It's an antifungal medication. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, That would be something I would resort to if, for example, grapeseed extract and eliminating sugar from the diet, if those didn't work. Candida um, survive off of sugar. They have to have sugar to survive, and and you can starve them. There's also a product called Candex, Mm C-A-N-D-E-X. Okay. That's very effective. Um, If you have significant overgrowth, you just want to make sure that you don't tackle the candida, you know, I always say Rome wasn't built in a day. Well, candida aren't going to to leave your body in a day. Yeah, so okay. it, the die-off process can really be a miserable experience if you go too fast mm-hmm. with this. So, you know, you want to look at your diet and eliminate sugar, and then mm-hmm. you want to introduce some grapeseed extract capsule or tablet and liquid. Form. Mm-hmm. The liquid, you can um, put the drops in your water to okay. drink. Um, and then maybe in the next two to three weeks, you could introduce the Candex protocol, and you would just follow the manufacturer's instructions on the label, you know, and then see. You could retest and see, but that's what I would do. How much I always tell everybody's yeah, going slow, so you're not... You know, go slow with this because you mm-hmm. can be miserable if the die-off is too quick. Okay. So what time would you suggest it takes to get rid of it? About what time? Or, yeah. you, usually take it, you usually take it in the morning and in the evening. And with the Candex, it's usually taken um, at bedtime for the, for the optimal effects. Okay. Thank and you for your questions, Justina. Yeah. You're yes, thank, thank you. you Good luck to you. Thank you very much. And uh, while we're waiting, I have one question. Yes. So how far along our journey into, um, uh, like, um, uh, after being diagnosed with Hashimoto, should we start the LDN uh, protocol? Okay. So I am a firm believer that we need to look at, you know, underlying issues, um, underlying co-infections and addressing those, uh, looking at changing the, the nutrition, you know, by eliminating definitely gluten-free and dairy-free and inflammatory foods for you as an individual or for the person. And then if, if, if those factors combined with stress reduction and optimizing thyroid hormone are not effective in reducing antibodies. It's the antibodies that we're looking at. So over time, if they're not going down, um, it, it's a you know, strong case for the consideration of LDN. And I've, I've worked with women who, you know, six to nine months, uh, there was really no change. And... They were ready to look at LDN, especially in consideration of the fact that there's this um, knowledge that if you have one autoimmune disease, you're susceptible for secondary autoimmune diseases, and LDN can, you know, help to prevent that. So it's really just an individual consideration, um, how long one person is willing to wait to watch their antibodies drop may be a different timetable for the next person. Um, I tend to work with women in the 35 to 50 range, and most of my ladies are, you know, 
patient, but but they want to get LDN on board if they don't see a move in their antibodies fairly quickly. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you. (laughs) That does answer my question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, you were talking about uh, changing your diet and going gluten-free. Would you say that going gluten-free has to be 100%? Or does it kind of depend on wh- whether you feel good or not if you're doing like 90% or 80%? Yes, that's a great question, and I'm going to love <laughs> talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of my favorites. <laughs> um, so, for example, I have celiac disease, and <laughs> most people perceive celiac disease to be the worst-case scenario, you know, or the top condition that you need to avoid gluten, and mm-hmm. that is not true. Actually, a, c- a patient with celiac disease can actually consume a certain percentage of gluten and it not affect the villi in the s- small intestine. Mm-hmm. Um, this is also noted on you know, packaged products that say that it's um, endorsed by the Celiac Foundation, and mm-hmm. if you will look at that product closely, you'll see that Although it says it's gluten-free, it's really not free of gluten because they're allowed oh. to uh, incorporate a, a percentage of gluten into that product. Now, for the rest of us who have an autoimmune disease of any kind, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid, MS, lupus, whatever it is, the immune system doesn't care or can it discern if it sees one molecule of gluten or one million molecules of gluten, it is still going to launch an inflammatory process. And um, functional medicine researchers now say that that inflammation in response to just a minuscule amount of gluten can last as long as nine months. The The problem for those of us who have Hashimoto's is that gluten, and it, because it's this protein structure uh, that looks a lot like thyroid cells to the immune system, um, once it sees gluten and in its state of confusion and chaos, as it's attacking the gluten, it's also attacking your thyroid. Mm. So, you know, we're, gluten is inflammatory whether, you know, one is sensitive, allergic, you know, whatever um, to it. It's still an inflammatory protein. So it it is something we want to avoid because we have enough inflammation going on in our body, you know, regardless just by nature of having Hashimoto's. And issues associated with gluten don't always present as a, you know, issue with stomach distress. It could be, you know, joint pain. It could be a headache. It could be foggy brain. It could be just, you know, um, that you feel tired or skin rashes. So, Mm -hmm. yes. Does that help? Yeah, for sure. So would you uh, suggest to do, like, not rather rather eat no bread than gluten-free bread because it could still contain some... If it, if it says that it's certified gluten free, you're you mm-hmm. you can be okay. You know, I still wouldn't want to overdo it, but you, you're okay there. Mm-hmm. If it's a product that's endorsed by the Celiac Foundation, it's not going to say that it's certified gluten free. It'll okay. say that it's gluten free, but it, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's um, only certified brand. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's a really yes, interesting you're topic. Welcome. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, it's Deb again. Um, so essentially with the LDN, there's no, it's not a get out of jail free card, essentially. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I love the way you put that. Yeah. Um, it is not a standalone treatment. You know, you uh-huh. can't go on LDN and then start eating gluten and drinking dairy and, um, you know, just put everything else to the wind, you still have Uh to incorporate the same lifestyle modifications you would have. I guess you could describe LDN as sort of the icing on the cake. Um, Uh It is going to help prevent uh, secondary autoimmune diseases. And let me just say this. Since I've been on LDN, I have not had a cold or the flu or any contagious anything 
And, you know, years ago in the clinical setting, I had patients cough in my face, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't catch it. Now, recently I had a surgical procedure, so I had to come off LDN, uh, you know, a week before my surgery. And the reason we do that is because it's an opiate blocker and your post-surgery pain medication won't work because mm-hmm. LDN would block it. It's not the anesthesia. That's a misconception. Your anesthesia is still going to work. It's right. the post-op medication. So I only stayed, you know, I, I stayed on pain medication, I think, for three days after because I needed to get back on LDN as soon as I could. Right. I did catch a cold after after that period, um, and I attribute that to going off of LDN. You know, all these years I haven't had a thing, and, and I hear this from so many women. I hear the same story over and over that, you know, once they went on LDN, they haven't had the flu, a cold, a virus, anything. Um, and so that's been a benefit. And for me, I just really, you know, with the three issues I already had diagnosed, I just didn't want any more autoimmune disease. Right. Um, I have one more quick question. Have have you dealt with people with thyroid nodules? Yes. I mean, is that related to the Hashimoto's? Yes, it can. Yes, it is. It can be. Um, it, It can be related to a couple of things. For example, it can be. Um, inflammation where the white blood cells are congregating, especially if it's near the esophageal area, um, that can be called um, eosinophil esophagitis where the white blood cells are congregating and it gives the appearance of nodes, you know, nodules. You really have to have an ultrasound to be sure. Um, Some endocrinologists will convince you that you need to have surgically removed. Others take a conservative approach and want to just sort of watch and wait. And I'm in that camp that you right. are conservative and and uh, take that approach to watch and see because sometimes it's it, it just um, is another hornet's nest to have those removed. It can right. cause another set of you know problems that you know you you weren't informed about. Right. I've had them since 1996, and I was following Dr. Bernstein with the iodine. Mm-hmm. To keep the size down, but then I went to a, a program that was um, designed by Dr. Davis. Is it Kazarian? Kikarazian? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, oh, I um, get to meet. Um, I'll be meeting him next month for a training yeah, session. Very impressed. It, it seems like you know, um, with Hashimoto's iodine, the practitioner I was working at the time said it's the worst thing you could do. Take iodine, and, and I yeah. when I stopped the iodine. That's why I, I started Synthroid, just to keep the size of the the nodules in mind. I've personally um, never been able to do iodine, and I have made five attempts. But I will tell you: um, Have you been to the website called BreastCancerChoices.org? No. That website is very resourceful because if you are going to use iodine, you you must be on the cofactors for iodine, and they have the iodine protocol there. A lot of researchers say that for patients who do have problems with attempting iodine, that um, we can use Lugol's 2% and apply it to the heel of our foot. It's a liquid, so you apply it to the heel of the foot to stay under the radar of the immune system and slowly titrate up. But even with that, you want to make sure that you're on the cofactors for iodine. Um, And 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 you can find that protocol. Sorry. So the purpose, this is to control the size of the nodules? This would be an alternative, potentially? Well, possibly, you know, I don't know why with the iodine, you know, what was going on in your body. Iodine is a very slippery slope, you know, for us. Yeah. Um, Some respond well and some it's like pouring gasoline on a fire, you know, so Mm -hmm. um, you have to be careful. But I do know that in order to have any success with iodine, you have to be also taking the cofactors. And that's certain dosages of, you know, vitamin C and selenium and the B2 and B3 vitamins Mm -hmm. in specific doses. For me, with having celiac disease, 
and not really absorbing the vitamins and minerals any particular months the way I should be, um, it, it just didn't work out for me. Thank you for your question. Okay. You know that nonprofit like Ashimoto Awareness relies uh, is depending entirely on donation and collaboration from organization and, and the public. And so we welcome, you know, any donations if you like the program that we have started tonight and if you'd like to continue to um, listen once a month to our conference call, to so please go to our website and donate to Hashimoto Awareness. And Shannon, thank you so much from the bottom of our heart. Thank you, Fabienne and Joseph. I'm, I feel so honored and blessed to be here with you. And we Thank will post you. tomorrow the links of your book, and um, in the next couple of days it will be on meetup.com, and you can check on that. Okay, fantastic. And I just want to say I apologize for the barking puppy. His brother just passed away a few days ago, and he's just a little restless. So. Oh, it's no problem at all, Shannon. It is a pleasure to have his little spirit with us tonight as well. Yes, okay. Thank him. <laughs> thank thank you. you, everyone, for joining also. Yes, thank you. Keep, keep tuned, you guys. Thank you so much for being with us.